was going to go for an appointment with a publisher here in the UK and I was very excited about this meeting and the publisher said to me come along and bring any any idea you have in the world of anything you want to do and I was super excited I thought this is brilliant I'm going to be able to go and show this publisher my dream job and then I thought what is my dream job what would what would I like to do if I could do anything in the world what would it be I was completely stuck and I was stuck for weeks and I was getting quite worried and then one day I was out with my dog and we went for a walk and we passed a house that was all boarded up it had wood inside wooden panels inside the windows it had some broken glass it had builders signs up on the fence outside that said keep out and as I stood there, I thought, well, that's interesting. That's an interesting building. I hadn't noticed it before. And I, then I thought, I really, really want to be able to go over that wall and know what it's like to be in there. I really want to be able to explore. So I got out my sketchbook, it's in my backpack, and I made this drawing there on the spot. So here you can see the house. Um, you can see this window that juts out here. And the keep out signs, the warning signs. Uh, this is an old apple tree. Um, so I made that drawing and I began to think, oh, I really wish I could explore. I wish I could go in there. What would it be like? What would it be like if there was somebody there? Who would they be? What would their story be? And as I walked back with the dog, I thought of all my favorite stories. So um, I thought of this book, called The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And another story by the same author called A Little Princess, about a girl who's locked in an attic and she has a doll for company. The best book in the world, Jane Eyre. And a very scary story, The Tulip Touch, written by Anne Fine. So as I walked back, I thought of all of this house I'd just seen and of all my favorite stories. And they all had strong female characters. And they all had, or most of them had, something at the center of them, a house or a, a building where that held a mystery. And I began to think about who, who might be there in the house I'd just seen and what the opposite of that would be. And so when I got home, I thought, I've got a mysterious house and I need the opposite of that. What's the opposite? It's the thing that I see every day when I'm having a shower. I look out my bathroom window and I see this. I see this row of houses, the back of these houses. And you can see up here, you've got a little, little room up here. So I did it, this draw, stood in my bath and I made this drawing. And from that point on, I knew in my mind that I had two girls in two places, two different times, and how I wanted to write the story of Thornhill. Um, I decided to make an illustrated book because I am an illustrator. I have been illustrating for 20 years and I mostly illustrate books, I've always illustrated books that are for other authors. Um, and in the last 10 years, they have mostly been for uh, older end fiction, middle grade fiction, um, and in books that are set outside and in gardens and in nature. And I thought I really, really wanted to make something to take to this publisher. I wanted to take an idea of something that would really push me and stretch me and show that I could do more than the things that I was being commissioned for. Much as I loved all those books, I really wanted to, to test myself to see what else I could do. 
Um, so of course, I would want to approach that through illustration first. But I love books. Um, I teach illustration. I teach illustration for children. So my house is full of books that are for baby board books and young picture books and young readers and YA novels. Um, and so I wanted to take all the inspiration I had from all these different places and try and see if I could make a book that used storytelling in a slightly different way and that would really test me as an illustrator. Why did I do that in black and white? Well, three reasons. Um, the first one is a very, very, very boring reason. And that's because in publishing, if you're going to do a lot of pictures and it's going to be a big book of pictures, it's much cheaper to publish if it's in black and white. The second reason is I do work in colour and I can work in colour, but I'm just not as good at it. I just don't enjoy it as much. And that means that really the third thing is that I absolutely love, love working black and white. Um, I love the tiny differences between different types of black or greys. Um, I wear black. I, um, I draw a lot in black and white. Um, I watch black and white movies. Uh, and I really love the drama that you can get when you are um, seeing a silhouetted figure against the light background or something is lit by a shaft of light. All of those things I find perpetually exciting. And even though it's, it's a very, very limited palette, um, I, never, I never get bored by it, never. <music> did know how the story would end when I started writing it and when I proposed the story to the publisher here in the UK I had written the ending, um, I had written what was going to happen to Mary and Ella um, and as I worked on it I changed my mind and I, I had a, a darker ending than the one there is now and when I took it to the publisher, they said, Pam, you, you can't do this. You can't have that ending. It's just too, too spooky. Um, and you've, you've already told us this, this ending that you had. Can we stick to that one, please? Um, so I did. So I, I, I trust them. I trusted their opinions and I, I went with the original proposal. Um, there are several things in Thornhill that I have left open-ended. Um, for example, I think we don't know where Ella's mother is and what's happened to her. Um, and I think we don't know what's going to happen uh, at the end of the story and, and if the cycle is going to begin again or if, if everything is fine now. And I do like those open-ended um, stories sometimes. I thought it was especially important in this case because I wanted so much of the book is the reader doing so much of the work, whether you're looking at the pictures and, and making the story out of those or whether you're understanding what um, Mary's situation has been through reading the diary entries. I think that I'm asking the reader to do a lot of work and um, to piece the story together. And I therefore trust my reader at the end to have their own ideas about what's going to happen and that and that that they could go on and, and write or imagine what what was going to come next um this is a good question i find it really hard to answer i've been thinking about it since i read these questions um there are really only three main characters in this story and one of them only appears at the end um, I would, obviously, I would really want to comfort both Mary and Ella. Um, but I think that if I was going to go around and hang out with someone for a short time and say it's going to be okay, I would probably choose Ella because her circumstance um, could be temporary. And that when you move to a new place and things all change and are all different and you feel very lonely, 
eventually they do sort themselves out and you do find your feet and her circumstances would have become different. Um, so I think if I was going to just pop by and, and have a bit of a chat um, with one of the characters, it, it, it would be it would be Ella. Um, but essentially, I'm very, very fond of of both Mary and Ella. And I, I really feel for them both in their very different um, circumstances. Okay, well, thank you very much for sending me the questions and thank you very much for being interested in Thornhill. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.